So what kind of data are we talking about that, uh, that your business is enabling companies to access and, and analyze? So we analyze anonymized patient data in partnership with NHS trusts and that allows us to ask questions of the data to help companies understand how to improve the design of clinical trials, how to understand the complexity of medicine, uh, to be able to analyze digital patient records, to see the hidden patterns in that data to lead to new discoveries to accelerate medical research. And is this data in demand from companies, pharmaceutical companies globally, uh, even those that might not necessarily have as much exposure to the UK market? Yes, the, there's now a growing recognition that the ability to get real world evidence from digital patient records, once that they've been anonymized and aggregated, can be very useful in helping to accelerate the pharmaceutical discovery process, and that applies internationally. And, and uh, there's been a lot of talk, there was, well, was, there was controversy uh, at, at many, some years ago around uh, the use of, of data from NHS records, um, but it was made clear that it's all anonymized. Update us then, uh, Paul, on where we are on that. Is it, the, the use of anonymized data, has this all been uh, dealt with? I think it's, a, uh, it's very important that the purposes for which the data is analysed is really clear. And so all of the analysis that we do is for the single purpose of delivering a patient benefit, being able to understand how to improve healthcare to be able to discover new medicines. And I think it's that clarity, not using the analysis of this data for anything else, only using data once it's been anonymised, that's really important to maintain confidence in what's being done. Could the blockchain feature at all in your business model, if not now, then in the future? Potentially in the future, the ability to use blockchain technology to be able to improve security um, is definitely there, but it also slows down analysis, so it's a balance between at what stage the technology is ready to be used in, in patient record management. Um, what kind of products have already been made using this kind of data? What kind of discoveries? So can, you, can you illustrate any, any examples? Yeah, so for example, in the case of uh, Pregnancy and Diabetes, a software application which enables a pregnant woman to better be able to manage the diabetes that she's having to get, uh, get control of really quite quickly during the pregnancy. And as well as being able to be a very effective tool that improves outcomes for the woman and, and the baby, it reduces the proportion of women that have to have a cesarean section, for example, that's been shown in the clinical trial. It's also very useful in being able to collect information about the progress of the diabetes within pregnancy which can then be used for medical research so we can get a better understanding of diabetes because if your mum develops diabetes while you're in the womb you're much more likely to develop diabetes later in life so it's very important that medical research is done in this area. What sort of conversations have you had with potential investors? What excites them the most about what you're doing and what areas are they perhaps a little bit more concerned or reticent about? So we've been really delighted by the strong interest that we've seen here in London for our business and our, our IPO today. I think what in excites investors is they see that here in the UK we've got these two great strengths. We're one of the leading countries in the field of artificial intelligence alongside China and the United States. But also uniquely we have the NHS. It's a fully integrated healthcare system. Everyone has an NHS number. So this cr creates potentially a wonderful asset here in the UK. You combine that with leading AI, which we've been able to uh, work with in collaboration with Oxford University here in the UK. This gives uh, the UK um, world leading strengths and the ability to build a very strong sector within mm. the life sciences industry. And how big does that make the UK? In it, how, how helpful is that data set in making the UK a big player in health tech or playing a, you know, a, 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 an outsized role in health tech? It makes a huge difference because it's an integrated healthcare system. It looks after people from birth through to death all medical conditions and so the quality of the data set and the ability to study all aspects of healthcare provides the UK with a, a really strong advantage, potentially the best population health data set that there is. Is this a good time to be IPOing with Brexit so close? Yes, I think that the um, there are always um, issues of uncertainty. Um, Brexit certainly is, is one that weighs heavily on the minds of, of CEOs here in, in the UK. But for us, 
because we work in partnership with the NHS trusts, because the NHS trusts have equity, about 10% in our company, it's very important for us to be a public company. And the London Stock Exchange, with very high standards of corporate governance, is absolutely the right place for us to list. What, what, uh, what worries you about, uh, about Brexit, uh, Paul, or excites you? And you can answer this from the sort of biotechnology industry, if you like. Or I mean, you, you wear a number of hats, don't you? You sit in the House of Lords, you're also on the board of Airbus. What, what are your thoughts as we head towards the end of the year? I think the most challenging thing right now is the uncertainty that Brexit causes. So whether it's uh, for a biotechnology company uh, grappling with um, issues about the uncertainty over future regulation or an aerospace company such as Airbase grappling with issues relating to the very complex logistics supply chains that are affected by the outcome of Brexit. And so the most important thing is for the negotiators on both sides yep. to work together to get to clarity for business as soon as possible.